Okay, we're calling into session the Public Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs for the Wednesday, April 20th, 2022, 1 p.m. in room 225. So, uh, if you're on Zoom and this meeting will be on Zoom and as well as um, was it? YouTube. So if your name is called um, and the names aren't uh, read properly, uh, we apologize for that. And uh, it will be the you can always look for the testimony from the testifiers list. You can go to the website and get that. Uh, although we have a number of uh, HCRs, I think, I don't think you'll need more than two minutes that you're allotted. So beginning with that, I'd like to introduce my co-chair, uh, Senator Lynn Decoit and Senator Baker. And the three of us here, we're the quorum, so we can move forward. Anyway, the first measure is HCR 27, House Draft 1, requesting the United States Census Bureau to redesignate the census design place known as Captain Cook on the island of Hawaii as Kava'aloa and requesting Hawaii County to remove all references to the Captain Cook as the place name on the island of Hawaii. So for a testifier's list, we have Smiley David, uh, council member in support, Michelle Lee, who is opposed and on Zoom. So Mich Mitchell, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, you can proceed. Okay. Uh, aloha and, and mahalo to the members of the committee for allowing me to submit testimony. I have um, owned property and paid taxes in Captain Cook since 1990. And there are five reasons why I would like you to please consider to vote against this measure. The first one is that the measure is not supported by people who actually live and work in Captain Cook. At the um, hearing in the House, the proponents of this measure said they had a petition with 2,600 signatures in favor of it. In reality, I saw the, I found the petition afterwards. It only had about 11, but this petition was on a, a website called change.org. It's an international website, and most of the signatures are not only outside of Captain Cook, but they're also outside of Hawaii. In fact, at the House hearing, when asked how many of the 2,600 people were actually lived in Captain Cook, the proponents could not answer that question. The reality is that this is a measure that is not supported by locals. I have spoken informally with about 20 people who live in Captain Cook to a person. They each are against this measure. Secondly, the proposed name change will hurt small business people like myself. It's gonna cost money to change all of our marketing materials, our signage, et cetera. Some companies even have Captain Cook in their name and that is gonna be a tremendous burden on them. I for one would rather spend the money on hiring local talent. There's a brain drain on the big island and many of our good high school graduates are leaving the island because there's not good employment opportunities. Third, the proposed name change is not a good use of county and state funds. Uh, um, I think we could spend this money on better things like um, homelessness, mental health care, et cetera. It's just not a good use of funds. Um, fourth, this is much more about cancel culture and not about Hawaiian culture. The proponents of this uh, measure have incorrectly cast, uh, characterized Captain Cook as a slave trader and someone who has murdered scores of Hawaiians. None of that is true. The, the proponents are getting caught up in cancel, council, cancel culture. And I believe that, um, that, 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 that the state of Hawaii can do better than, than can get caught up in this wave. Um, 
And by the way, I just want to go back to the point I said first about the people who live and support and work in Captain Cook don't support this. If nothing else, I urge your committee to do a non-binding vote. Let's go right to the source. Let's ask the people of Captain Cook how they feel about the name change. And that leads to my final point. The proponents, I'm sorry, uh, I, you, I, I'm, you, I'm sorry, my, my final point. The proponents of this name change are hypocritical. They are, they are saying that Captain Cook came here and took something from the Hawaiian people. Well, now the proponents of this name change want to come to Captain Cook and take something away from us. It means something to us. I respect Hawaiian culture. I'm not saying that my needs are any more important than native Hawaiians, but Please, I'm not thank saying, you. Okay, thank well, thank, you. thank, thank you, you all very much, much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have uh, Hilani Maka, Makanaloa. Is she there? Hilani? Nope. Okay, is, a, is in support of the measure. Barbara DeFranco. Barbara, are you here? No? Anyway, in opposition. Kenneth uh, Conklin uh, sending testimony in opposition. Are there any others in out in Zoom that they want to testify in this measure? No? Okay, then I'll just go through the list. There's a uh, Ben L in opposition, Lee McClintock or McIntosh in opposition, Karen Anderson opposed, Momi Lovell sent in comments, Melinda Ramirez in support. Uh, well, Momi Lovell in support. Bobby Camara sent in comments. Leilani Spencer in support. Nicole Baker in support. Stephen Liu in support. Joy Liu in support. Mahialani Maioho in support. Margie Dorsey in support. Dr. Richard Bennett in support. Brian Pavalailani. Uh, Ozawa in support, uh, Ihilani Buffet in support, um, Marile Kahawai in support, Shane Akioni Palakat Nelson in support, Earl Takaki in support, uh, let's see, there are a few others. Uh, Lahela Spencer support, Barbara DeFranco opposition, Anuhia Leong in support, uh, Karen Anderson comments, uh, Malia Okalani Pascal in support, Mary Narshif uh, in support, Noilani Sugita, Sugata in support, Andrea Andrews in support, Kekoa, Kealoha in support. And so that brings it to the end of that particular testifiers list. So we're going to move on to HCR 35, requesting the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency to develop a preliminary draft evacuation plan for the areas within Lava Zones 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And we have Luke Myers. Luke, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chair Vice Chair. My name is uh, Luke Myers, the Administrator of Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. AMA stands uh, on a written testimony offering comments on HCR 35. Uh, this is a uh, crossover from a previous resolution um, uh, from the last fiscal year. HAIMA continues to uh, balance a number of uh, COVID-related items uh, and getting ready for active hurricane season. Uh, we do believe that disasters starting in at the local level, uh, and we're committed to uh, working with uh, Hawaii County Civil Defense, Hawaii County, uh, the National Park, and others uh, on the implementation of a volcanic operational support plan, uh, which will provide some guidance and direction uh, in collaboration with those partners uh, for any of the volcanic hazards that may occur in the Big Island. Uh, 
available for questions and necessary. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Lou. Okay, the following, uh, anyone else uh, on Zoom that would like to testify on this measure or in the audience? No, otherwise, the next following number of people will be all in support, Becky Jones, Julia Lindbergh, Alan Bartolome, Barbara Siglianero in support, and Renee Rapp all in support. So we'll be moving on to questions, anybody? No? Okay, moving on to ACR 87. It's urging the city and county of Honolulu to establish a new police district in Leeward, Oahu to provide adequate police services and law enforcement response for growing Leeward, Oahu communities. And uh, first, of, we have no uh, testifiers, um, at least on Zoom or in the audience. So I'll just read off the written comments. Robert Cavaco uh, for Shopo in support, uh, Alan Bosberg in support, Stephanie Ware in support, Danny Lieberitz in support. And members, any questions? If not, we're gonna do HCR 128, which is me urging the counties to more effectively and meaningfully coordinate their police enforcement and public awareness efforts with the state and humane societies and other animal welfare organizations concerning the dangers posed by unleashed dogs to humans and to other animals in public areas. So we have uh, Kurt Cottrell on Zoom. Kurt. Hey, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Kurt Cottrell, Administrator, Division of State Parks. And um, we stand in support of this measure and, and stand on our written testimony. Mahalo. Thank you. Alan Carpenter. Oh, he's just my backup. He's your backup. <laughs> oh. So I guess he concurs with what you wrote. <laughs> okay. James Nelson. Oh, yeah. Hi, James. Jimmy, have you recovered from your injuries? Um, <laughs> they get better every day. Um, uh, this is, I just wanted to note for you that this is the companion measure to SCR 196, which you folks kindly heard last month. It remains unamended, so it's in the exact same form as it was when you heard it um, last month. Um, so I appreciate your support. I was asked by Senator Baker last time whether the leash laws are all in the county codes. And I was a little bit hesitant in answering, but I did look it up since then and all four of them are actually in the county codes. The only one that's a matter of rules is DLNR because it's not in the statute. Right. So it's in the administrative rules. The county codes cover all public spaces, which is parks and roadways and school grounds and other places like that. The DLNR one of course only covers parks and, and trails and places mm -hmm. like that. So I. I did confirm that. So thank you for your support. I have a question for you, Jimmy. When that, I noticed your testimony, you said something, as far as you know, the dog's still roaming around. As far as I know, yes. Because again, this is the problem with the cross responsibilities between the police department and the humane societies and DLNR if it's involved. And it's very hard to get any, you know, um, answers as to what, you know, it happens. Um, I do know that in the case of the constituents that, that originally brought this issue to us for the constituent problem, they, the Maui Humane Society actually worked with the owner of the dog that was the attacking dog and the owner agreed to have that dog destroyed. So that, that person got some resolution on the spot. Um, you know, different cases result in, in, in different yeah. outcomes. And so um, it's actually takes longer if it gets into a criminal context because then it has to go through criminal yeah. court. So that's that's the case, so. So you've never encountered the dog again? Um, no, I haven't. I, I've not, I've intentionally not gone to the park with it out of <laughs> hand, so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, and that brings us to the end of that testifies. So we have one last measure. 
HCR 157 urging the allocation of additional resources to increase police presence on the Waianae coast and the creation of a new police district for Waianae that is separate from Kapolei and Eva. We have only one testifier in support of that, and that's Norman A. Cody, or Cody, in support. And I don't think there's anyone else out there. So, members, uh, you wanna, can we count us down to so we can um, have deliberations now? Okay. Recess. Recess. Okay, calling it back to committee into session for the 1 p.m. April 20th, 22 uh, agenda in room 225. And so the recommendation of the committee is on the first one, HCR 27, House Draft 1. We're going to defer this measure indefinitely. And for HCR 35, to pass it as is. Chair goes aye. Members, Chair's recommendation is to pass HCR 35 on amended. Chair goes aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Baker. Aye. Senator Rivera. Aye. Senator Favela, excuse Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. HCR 87. We'll pass this one as is. Anyone questions otherwise? Here goes I. Members voting on HCR 87, passing on the amended. Chair's recommendation is to pass as it unamended. Recognizing all members here with the excuse of Senator Favela, any reservations or nays? Seeing none, Chair, your measures are adopted. Thank you. On HCR 128, our recommendation is to pass it as is unamended. Chair goes I. Members voting on HCR 128, Chair's recommendation is to pass unamended, recognizing all members here. With the excuse of Senator Favela, any reservations or nays? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. HCR 157, recommendation to pass it unamended as is. Chair goes aye. Members, Chair's recommendation is to pass HCR 157 unamended. Recognizing all members here with the exception of the excuse of Senator Bella. Any reservations or nays? Seeing none, Chair, your measure is adopted. Thank you. Okay. This concludes that session. Going into uh, the Wednesday, April 20th, 2022, 120 agenda in room 225 for the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs, and the Committee on Government Operations. Oh, okay, here we go. There's only one measure, it's HCR 8, House Draft 1, requesting the display of the prisoner of war and missing in action flag at the state capitol. And we have, I guess, uh, Ron Hahn in support. I guess he's not on Zoom. And then we have David Rolf. He's here. On Zoom. on Zoom, so Dave. Chair yes. and Maury Kawa and Vice Chairs uh, uh, Decoit and Dela Cruz and members of the committee. My wife Sherry and I are in strong support of HCR 8 HD1, which proposes the display of the POW MIA flag at the state capitol on designated days. The POW MIA flag is the symbol of our nation's concern and commitment to resolving as fully as possible 
the fates of Americans still prisoner or missing and, un and unaccounted for in Southeast Asia. Sherry and I are members of the Vietnam War generation. Sherry experienced the war uh, so much more directly as an MIA wife, waiting and hoping for husband Lieutenant Gary Shanks to return while he was shot down near Haiphong and listed MIA in 1972. Uh, he was later to kill killer in action, but I, I knew Gary and Sherry from the Navy Flight Training Command. Uh, I was stationed stateside and uh, Gary and, and Sherry, uh, Gary was assigned to VA-56 and went off to the war. And remembering the service of our country, to the, of our country, uh, to our country, of Lieutenant Gary Shank and the U.S. Navy Captain Jerry Coffey, and all the more than 2,500 service members who were listed by the Department of Defense as prisoner of war or missing in action at the end of the Vietnam War, we offer our support for House Concurrent Resolution 8, draft, House Draft 1, which proposes that the MIA uh, POW flag be displayed at the state capitol on Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and the National POW MIA Recognition Day. The POW MIA flag is special meaning for Sherry and me and the many family members and friends of those who are imprisoned in Vietnam or missing in action. As I said, Gary Shank was my roommate in the US Flight Training Command, who was Sherry's husband at the time he was shot down uh, by enemy aircraft fire in 1972 near Haiphong. Uh, his A-7B crashed into shallow waters. Uh, he was listed as MIA. Uh, search and rescue efforts were started immediately, but unsuccessful. Uh, later, later, the government declared that Gary was killed in action. As longtime friends, Sherry and I later married and came to Hawaii and started their business on Dillingham Boulevard. This is significant in that, you know, it had been more than a decade had passed since Gary's remains had been recovered. And when they were, they were brought to Hawaii and taken to the Central Identification Lab, which was just blocks away from our office. So Sherry had the opportunity to go over to the lab and be there while they were identifying Gary's remains. It was a very moving time for us, but it, it gave us such a deep appreciation for the closure that can be brought about by things like the Central Identification Lab, of which is the only one in the country. Um, so uh, it's, uh, Lieutenant Gary Shank is memorialized in the Vietnam Wall in the Courts of the Missing uh, at the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific in Punchbowl. And Lieutenant Jerry Coffey, a seven-year Vietnam War POW, uh, now deceased though, was my commanding officer in the Navy Flight Squadron VC-1 at Barbers Point when Sherry and I came to Hawaii more than 40 years ago. So with a strong US military presence in Hawaii, it is fitting that a display of the continuing remembrance of the POWMIA service members be made on the specially designated days at the state capitol. Sherry and I offer our thanks to the committee chairs for hearing this resolution and to Representative Linda Ichiyama for introducing it. We appreciate this opportunity to testify. Well, thank you for your service, Chair. Uh, the event. We thank you for your testimony as well. Next, we have in the audience Dennis Ege. Is that pronounce your name right? You got it right. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for giving me this opportunity to testify. Uh, I had to go to uh, <coughs> Representative Linda, uh, Linda Chiama's office to get copies of my testimony from the House uh, testimony. And I'd like to share it with, with the committee with you for if, if you can permit that. But, uh, my total support for this measure is based on what I've seen in a few other states where the flag is it's just up there 24-7. Uh, we have that uh, most predominantly probably in Hickam Air Force Base. And what it does what, by not doing that here is what we're saying. Uh, Hawaii has the largest veterans military community per capita in the nation. So why not show it? And I'm only asking for one place, the flagpole outside the state capitol. That speaks for the state, that's enough. Doesn't have to, doesn't have to be everywhere in everybody's jurisdiction within the state administration. So that would, that's my request that you encourage the, the governor to just make that happen. Uh, 
I didn't do very well in the house. Uh, they gave me three days. I wanted 365 because those prisoners of war who nobody knows about, they're prisoners not just for three days, every day. And they need to be know, know in their heart that we're reaching out for them as best we can every day, not just announcing. And then people will look up and, oh, Hawaii has uh, the largest the veterans military community in the nation. So I think that'll speak uh, largely for what we say we stand for. It'll be there for everybody to see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Can I read? Yeah. And thank you for yours to us. It's much appreciated. Thank you. I don't think we need to for we can go to the FAQ folks, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we've heard enough that we would certainly support this. So um, I'll just read the the result and then we'll just move forward. Okay, for ACR 8, House Draft 1, requesting the display of the prisoner of war and missing in action flag in the state capitol. Um, I believe it's the right thing to do. And the chair votes aye, and I think that helped the community, uh, committee does likewise. Members voting on HCR 8. HD1 chair's recommendation is to pass on amended. Uh, chair goes aye. Vice chair goes aye. Senator Baker. Aye. Senator Rivera. Aye. Senator Favela. Excuse. Chair, your measures are adopted. Thank you. For, G For GVO, um, the same recommendation to pass HCR 8, House Draft 1, unamended. Uh, chair votes aye. Uh, Senator Delacruz, excuse. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator Gabbard, Aye. the uh, measure is adopted. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Now we're gonna do this. No. Oh. Okay.